station that keeps it rocking 24 7. Ladies and gentlemen, and gentlemen, gentlemen. Grizz, Biz, my two cents. That keeps it rocking 24 7. Ladies and gentlemen, and gentlemen, gentlemen. Grizz Biz, my two cents. Hey, hey, when they come to the hustle, you ain't seen nothing like it. I always knew this day would come, I ain't seen one sack. That's all my niggas play at once, I ain't got no sidekicks. And all my ladies know what's up, I ain't got one side chick. Hey, yo, it's Mr. Seventh Letter, I'm so fucking G. Let's try to wire your favorite woman. Grizz, Biz, my two cents. It's Wednesday to Wednesday to Wednesday. We are back at it. Yes, let's give a round of applause. I always get hyped on Wednesdays. You know what I'm saying? Is it a lotto day too? Might be a lotto day on Wednesdays. You know, they don't mean stuff. You don't win the lotto anyway. But anyway, we was back at it. And as you can see, the diva will be here when the diva gets here. The other diva. She's on a sabbatical too. I guess they're taking turns doing sabbaticals. So we got some things in the works for everybody. Uh, let's give our, our producer a round of applause. Let's give you know, him a round of applause. He gets thrown all these curveballs, man. And he still flies through with flying colors. You know what I'm saying? That's what it is. But this Wednesday, we got some good information, man. We got a guest today. Uh... First, let me give a round. Where's my uh, new co-host? Uh, I want to give her a round of applause, Miss Nikki Baby. She got a new segment coming on called uh, Products and Reviews. You know what I'm saying? She must have uh, tapped out. Both of them tapped out? No, there she is. Let's give Miss Nikki Baby a round of applause. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, like I said, she got a new segment coming on. Products and review, you know what I'm talking about? If she got lipstick, you want her to try a lip, brand of lipstick, she might even have that lipstick, you know? Give her a review on it. I don't know too much about the lady stuff, so we just going to leave it right there. I I can go down a rabbit hole with that, you know? Woo! Yeah, I'll be in a rabbit hole with that one. But uh, now we got her in here. Uh, The diva. I don't know if the diva's coming in through the door right now. She makes her grand interest, but uh, she should be here shortly. Uh, Ivory the Aries. And like I said, uh, let's give uh, Tanya Capri a round of applause, too. You know what I'm saying? Whatever. But uh, ladies and gentlemen, today's guest uh, is from Cincinnati. Uh, It's been in this game for a long time. And that game that we're talking about is filmmaking. You know, writers, actors, 
and all of that good stuff. And um, it's a lot of them in Cincinnati. I ain't gonna say a lot of them. I can count. I think uh, five, five uh, filmmakers, and each style is unique and different. Let's see, we didn't had um, yeah, three on here so far, and we've got two more. Uh, tonight's uh guest, like it's oh, look who walked in the door. Oh my goodness. <coughs> <coughs> Unbelievable. You know what I'm saying? Unbelievable. Y'all bear with us right here. Y'all bear with yeah, this is what happens when divas walk into the building. You know? You know? It's okay. It's okay. It's okay. We understand. Gonna give you a loud round of applause with your Shirley Tipper hairdo. You know what I'm talking about? That's what it took so long, wasn't it? You was underneath the dry. Let's give a round of applause for all the co-hosts coming in. And you know okay, all right, all right, all right. All Don't right. lie to the good people. All right. Well, let me introduce you to uh, Miss Nikki, baby. Miss Nikki, baby, this is Ivy the Aries. Let's give each other a round of applause. How you doing today, honey? We're going to talk about... We're going to talk about products and review. That's what she's going to be on. So y'all can talk that feminine stuff. And uh, your 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 microphone is on mute, ma'am. But um, yeah, she's going to be doing all of that. So y'all figure this would be a cool, this would be a, a thing where I just sit back and you know, as if that's going to happen. No, it's not. Gonna happen. <laughs> that is not going to happen because I want you to do a review on. I have to make it out. Let's stop it. I'm already going there. Oh, God. At least we got some help to tame this here beast. Okay. You know what I'm talking about? Yeah. Like, look, you know I'm excited because I said, you know what I'm talking about? I said it about 15 times already. Yeah, that's when you know he kind of, you know, a little on the edge uh, of his seat. Right, there it is. But, uh, like I was saying, today's guest uh, is a filmmaker who's been doing films and this type of work for a long time. You know what I'm saying? And Put his, made his mark. Um, I'm going to let him tell his story. Ladies and gentlemen, let's give Cincinnati's own Brandon Myrie a loud round of applause. And <laughs> this to the show, man. What a pleasure. What a pleasure. Yeah, man, your story is a unique story. You know what I'm saying? Because... Filmmaking, I'd have never thought filmmaking. I, 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 I see you posting up your Heisman Trophy, <laughs> your pose. You know what I'm talking about? Oh, the, I did like this. I, I, you, the ball right here. Oh, me, Lord. See, like this, this? Why, this why we need assistance. Yeah, yeah, you know what I'm talking about? You know what I'm talking about? You know what? What I, often wonder, or, what I often wonder, what I often wonder in this industry is really – what led you to the filmmaking industry? Yeah, what was you, that? You was in what football. Was, was it a thing, or was it a, a situation, or was it an opportunity? What what kind of put you in that direction? Man, that is a great question. How you doing, Ivy? By the way, hello, Good I'm well. Good he to see you. He grew up with your mama and them too. No, I'm, I'm sure not my going. mother, you, but man. yeah. <laughs> he's, like, he's around my age, little. Yeah, well, my mama ain't, so we just gonna leave that there. But <laughs> he know who your mama is. I'm sure a lot of people know. You know, if you from from our neighborhood, you definitely you know. know. You your definitely mama. know my mama. You know your mama. <laughs> you definitely know. Let's give your mama Sharon a round of applause. Let's give Sharon a round of applause. Bless her, bless her. Yes, give her a round of applause. She needed dealing with me day to day. Drew, you know what? I don't appreciate that. Don't there she go. There she go. There she go. There she go. Let's get back to the question okay. at hand. Mr. Uh-huh. Myrie, I am interested to know. Um, we used to have said our hellos. Thank you so much for coming on to the show. I have been kind of interested in, a, in anticipating this interview because that is one thing I think I really wanted to always ask you, but I don't, I don't, I, we've never had the opportunity to have that conversation. Good. So I want to know. Yeah, that is a wonderful uh, question. I think when I was in my un- last year of undergrad, I had to take a creative writing course as an elective. And as a writer, there's a moment that when you write something on page, 
what's in your head and what's in your heart is on that page and it feels amazing okay mm-hmm. my teacher she said challenge me to do, you know do better and better work and they say the art of writing is rewriting and so like i said i felt so great about it that i was joking around with my tutors who were college who were graduate students at the time and i'm like yo i want to be a writer like y'all how can i write and one was like just write and the other one's like you know what you can do he said when i graduate i'm going to hollywood and i become a screenwriter and i'm like Okay, what's that? So we went on the internet. This is like 2002, maybe 2003. Okay. And we looked at scripts and screenplays of movies that have been produced already. Okay. And he said, once you learn the format, then you just let your ideas go from there. And the other one said, yeah, because you do got some pretty crazy ideas. <laughs> and so um, he gave me a list of books to read. I started reading books and I started reading scripts as a hobby. And so one thing I remember him always telling me was that uh, don't get too attached to your story because by the time you sell it, it ends up on a big screen. It's not going to look anything like what you originally wrote. Wow. And I was thinking like, hmm. You know, because it's a very collaborative process. But I started to think about that. And I said, wait, well, what if there were some stories I really wanted to tell? So I was like, okay, well, I'll find out directors had more creative control. And then I found out producers had more creative control. So this is like 2003. I'm in my last year of grad uh, uh, college. I get drafted, I think a year and a half later. And so I um, I came to Cali just on a whim for the All-Star game in 2004. And it was in LA. And I was staying with one of my high school coaches' sons. Uh, and... <laughs> I just remember me one of his friends and he was like, yo, if you land a national union commercial, you get paid every time the commercial airs. So I'm going to tell you guys, you guys can forget about it and then get a check for 15 grand, 20 grand, three months down the line. Yeah. Those people that you see, like the flows and all of those people oh, that yeah. do acting on that side, those they probably got paid millions of dollars, like literally. They get so much money from mm-hmm. them commercials because a national union commercial, you're going to get paid every time it airs. And so I was thinking like, what Gotta can get I a do piece that? of this money. <laughs> <laughs> what is a national union? What What is that? It's a commercial that is played nationally. Yes. And it, it's done, if, if they do it under the union, which is sag after after for actors, that means they have to pay a certain rate. And so if they're paying a certain rate, that means that every time it airs, like you could still, you could be watching one program and you could see a, a commercial seven times. Yep. Now imagine that in every market across the country so, over several months or over years, the people that the Jared's of the world, he's been paid millions, uh, yes. the flows of the world, millions, uh, mayhem, millions. All of these people have been paid millions of dollars for their. How do you they get in that commercial? <laughs> you need an agent. How do you look, get, look. How do you he's bypassing the whole story. Right, right, he's right, like, right, right, wait, right, let me wait, get to the I chat. I gotta ask. Please help me with this. Shoot, that was sounding good. And Jared is a pedophile. This pedophile can make millions. Oh my god. Jared. Commercial money, we all know that. Oh yeah. So let's done. not let's not even mention that that, well, that infamous was most, p word. Okay. Yeah, <laughs> so, it is a serious, serious Yeah, that, issue that's going serious. On. Yeah, we can't be laughing at that. Okay, but right. however, I get your drift. I, I yeah. definitely. Ba- Agent, you need some talent, you and you got to practice. Well, so I got, I got all that. <laughs> all right, so you Did out you there? Practice? Uh, I will. You 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 out there already. So you you keep that in mind. You know what I'm talking about? I, right. After after the, after we get finished with Come the, on, man. After Gris, we get finished, we gonna, Gris said, said give him the opportunity to touch yeah, the need, big screen. Yeah, okay. Well, don't talk no <laughs> If you haven't got a pimp daddy role, Grizz is your man. So the same. Oh, by the way, Farian just said, "What's up?" He said, "Call him on the show ASAP." He said, "What's up?" Uh, he Farian, can call. He, 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 he tell him the, the screen is the number is right there. Yep. He can call <laughs> in. Yeah, he's- <laughs> he can call in right there. I'm so sick of Zarian his and his and his shit's nick because he's supposed to be on here fifty million twenty times. He's gonna oh, be on wow. here. He's gonna be on here. But, but we gonna. 
Okay. Focus. Oh, Bring focus. it back. Take Bring it back. back. Focus. Okay. So here we are with this uh, knowledge that you have learned about how the industry actually works. And then, so you applied this knowledge in what way? So, yeah. So I, uh, I started taking writing classes when I was playing uh, for the Broncos. How was, was that? As is online. How you it's focus like, on NFL yeah. football, football and, and script writing, writing at the, the same, same time. time and be good at it? How you do that? <laughs> I mean, I'm, I'm, I, I know sometimes yeah, this, you, you just know, gift amazing, it. If you man. got it, you got it, right? How many seasons you play? It's it's a uh, it's a situation where you know I think football players, you know, people look at us a certain way, and mm-hmm. so. Uh, there's many faceted layers to football players, and some of them are the most brilliant people that you will know. And and we know, I know guys that are like artists. They're guys that are just like very into some very weird stuff that you would never imagine because they're football players, and people have like a world view of them. And so, um, yeah, it's amazing the type of things that you'll find people get into. I mean. Some How many seasons you play? Beethoven or something, you know, like literally, there's like that wide of range with football players that you happen to come across. And so I just happen to be interested in storytelling. And so um, I just ran with it. I really ran with it. So from there, uh, I, I was like, okay, not only writing, I wanted to take a customized, I, I wanted to take a filmmaking course. So I, I want to learn filmmaking. So after my second season, I took a customized filmmaking course in New York City. And they um, the hardest thing, the two hardest things to do in the world is to start something and finish it. Yeah. And so they wanted me to just shoot a scene. So I wrote out a short script. I shot it. Um, we edited it over a weekend. I just had the bug, man. And it was just, this was 2006. And I was like, yo. Hey, man, you was living a life. Uh, yeah. So I just really wanted to, to get out. I had a lot of stories that I wanted to tell. So... Uh, a lot of uh, Zarian says, shoot him the number. What is that number? 513 what? 788-2534. He's probably going to call in. 2534. <laughs> but he, he's driving. But neither here nor there. Um, yeah, it was just a lot of stuff that I wanted to tell. And just, I had a little, I guess, detour. But it was really to use to kind of get further into the storytelling where I ran across a guy he had a distribution deal on for music through Warner Brothers, but with it came like Warner Home Video distribution for movies. And I didn't care anything about music. And I was like, yo, I could do this to get into movies. Part. And I became yeah. co-owner of this company. Oh, and so uh, while he was focusing on his music stuff, I'm like, yo, let me, let's find a movie and put it out. So we ended up finding a movie. Uh, he was like, oh man, there was this movie that never got distribution. And uh, we acquired it. We put it out. I got an executive producer label. Right. Mm -hmm. And to answer your question, so I was probably going into my third year by the time it was coming out and I ended up getting hurt in training camp. I had pinched a nerve. So most people in football know what a stinger is. You run into somebody and your arm goes numb. Okay. It's gone in 30 seconds. Mine was there for months, maybe even years. Right. And so I had these stingers that I would get and playing football, you running at people for a living, right? So literally, I'm up here trying to get on the field, and that whole little game of playing football, on the, you know, just being competitive, knowing I probably should have been resting. You mm-hmm. see what I'm saying? So I ended up getting back on the field, and if you're back on the field playing, then you're good enough to get cut. So they released me knowing that I wasn't at 100%, right? So I'm up here soaking, and right at the same time, the movie was about to come out. I get a call from my high school, I mean, my college coach. And I was like, yo, coach, I got a movie coming out next week. And he was like, for real? I know you was into that. I was like, yeah. He said, man, you ever seen this movie called Pride? It was about these black swimmers in Philadelphia. Yeah, Bernie Mac, Terrence Howard, a bunch of young actors at the time. I was like, yo, I love this movie. He was like, yo, I know the writer. He was a sportscaster at Pitt before you got there. When I was at Bama. And so I was like, yo, coach, you got to put him in touch with me. He's like, mm, I'll see what I can do, man. He's like, I don't know. The next day, the guy calls me out of the blue. We <laughs> talked for 30 minutes. I'm like, yo, I got invited uh, at that time to a, a screenwriters conference. Okay. And so at that moment when I was talking to him, I was like, yo, I'm going to go. 
because like maybe I could come up to L.A. It was in San Diego. I could come up to L.A., meet him, blah, blah, blah. So when I got to that screenwriters conference, they had a pitch fest. And so for the last year and a half, I was focusing on the, the, the business side of it. A pitch fest is when they bring in producers from everywhere and they basically sit you in front of them for five minutes. You could pitch them a concept and they could decide whether or not they want to read it or not. Okay. And so I hadn't focused on anything creatively because I had that label. I was kind of focused on the business side. So I didn't have anything to pitch. So I just pitched myself. I was like, yo, up until a couple of weeks ago, I was a professional football player. I write, act, and direct. I got access to capital. How can we make your next movie? Like, it was like, I was just like, yo, I'm going to go ahead and do this. You know I'm going to do the business and side, so, but pitch it. Right. I mean, it was crazy. Like, so people came to me with all sorts of stuff. One guy was like, you speak Spanish? He wanted me to act in a Panamanian horror film. Like, it was like the craziest Okay. Thing. <laughs> what I realized is that, um, you know, what it, it takes such a long time for movies to go from A to Z, right? Mm -hmm. And so you can be working on a project, working on a project in years, and then by the time it gets to, you know, about to go down, you know, the everything fall, the floor falls out from it. And so you're back at square one. And so none of these were my projects either. So I was basically trying to leverage my distribution to help people get financing. So I was like a middleman. And these weren't like stories that I really cared about and anything like that. So I was like, man, you know, I want to start telling my stories. And so at that time, that's when I probably had started writing my first feature film. I wrote a feature film. This is back in Cincinnati. Uh, wrote another one. And I was like, yo, I'm going to start shooting, you know, independent movies in Cincy. And so um, I went through a program in 2012, 2013 um the nfl put on for former and current players they brought us out here to cali and we were on universal studio lot if you ever come to la there's a couple of things i want to explain ask y'all to do one go to universal and take the studio tour it's amazing um and go to lamert park which is africa town but the the studio tour is amazing so they put us on universal's lot where they shot like steven spielberg movies and all this other stuff and then in the meantime every day they brought in experts that were writers directors producers they brought in robert townsend and all these other guys and uh roger bob and a bunch of a bunch of you know big time writers directors anthony anderson i met him during this process and so uh they just taught us and then we were allowed to shoot a short film on universal's lot and so um, when I was talking to the guy who put this whole thing on, his name is Jeff Friday. He's like, he does the American Black Film Festival in Miami. That's another amazing film festival. If y'all just are fans of film, go to that festival. You'll enjoy it in Miami every June. Uh, and he was like, yo, is there anything keeping you back in Cincinnati? And I was like, uh, no. Nah. He's like, man, you might want to get out here. And so um, literally maybe... Uh, a year and a half after that, I got to Cali. So I got to I got to Southern Cali in 2015, but in 2014 I got to California. We were staying with some friends of ours, and uh, but anyway, um, the rest just kind of stuck. Like literally, all of 2015, um, uh, when I got here, uh, I wanted to. I felt like writing again, so I was like, all right, let me write a let me write me a, a web series. And I was like, there was somebody that I met, Zarian, and introduced me to. She was an actress. Um, and I was like, I would like to write something around you. I would like you, Zarian, to shoot it. And so we created this, I created the show called A Beautiful Mess Aside, and it starred and executive produced by Taja V. Simpson. Taja V. Simpson is an actress on Tyler Perry's The Oval. She's, you know, like uh, one of the main recurring characters. And she, her star is still rising. Like, literally, she's an amazing actress. Let's give her a And so, um, so, yeah. So, uh, that was, that's kind of how I got started, man. That's, that's a good story. I think yeah. that's the most quiet I've ever seen Grizz be while someone was answering. Honest. Usually, you're, really? usually, it usually it's a little different. Really? You know what I mean? Not that it's disrespectful. He just be overzealous to get the, to the next thing. Here he go. Here he go. <laughs> I didn't even say that. But it was the look. It was the look. It was the look. It was the look. You gave me oh the gosh. older big brother look. <laughs> let, me, let, me, let me ask you the, um Now, the docu series. 
Which one? I got one that's Life After, and I've got one that's Black in Hollywood. Let's. In 2018, I started a, a small production company, Movie Field Entertainment, and um, part of our model was to do short form stuff that had a long form companion. So what it meant was is like short things, like a web series, uh, short films, but they could also a web series could be a TV show, a short film could be a feature. So you want to prove the concept. And then be able to have something to be able to make it bigger and, you know, be able to get revenue from. Right. And so what we realized is that, you know, we kind of perfected that low budget, no budget filmmaking. It was like, mm -hmm. yo, if we just had a little bit of extra something. We can do something special. And so uh, right during the heart of the pandemic, I came up with the concept called Black in Hollywood. Now, where I got this concept from, I've been watching this uh, show. It's on YouTube. Check it out. It's very gripping and graphic. It's called Soft White Underbelly. Um, and Soft White Underbelly. That's yeah. Different. It is. A, it has a strong niche, y'all. I mean, I've gotta, I've got the name to, would uh, not initially attract me. I'll say soft that. White so underbelly. I'm kind of yeah. glad that someone what can is say that this about? is good. <laughs> Because my yeah. mind, I'm going down a rabbit hole. I'm going yeah. down the Reel rabbit in. hole. Reel them in. Just give Soft them something. Give them underbelly. Give them something. I'm going to tell you, because it's, it's pretty intriguing, y'all. I really, I, I, there is a place out here called Skid Row, right? Yeah. Skid yeah. Row. I visited Skid Row when I was in uh, L.A. So that's real. Oh, wow. Yeah. Okay. So, so it's yeah, like it crossing the street in this dope fiend alley. Basically, uh, yes. It's yeah. About the size of Lincoln Heights. Yeah, and, and it's kind of scary, yeah. weird, scary in a in a weird yeah. kind of a way. Yes. I'm not gonna just and say it's completely drug addict because you can literally see the mental health issues up and down yes. Skid Row. So it's bigger than drugs. But I'm sorry. Go ahead. No, absolutely. <laughs> um, yeah, it is. It's a it's a sight to be seen. And this guy, he goes there and he talks to pimps, prostitutes. He talks to uh, ah, I think I uh, have uh, seen some of the characters has, on and, this. Uh, and I tell you the truth, he uh, I mean, he gets death threats because there's people that get real attached to some of the personalities that he interviews. And there was a one she was such a sweetheart. I mean, he was interviewing yep. her and you could this tell she was is, yep. just so uh, she was so high. She was she was definitely drugged out when. When she he had interviewed her a few times, and he he tries to get them help and things like that, but he and the a lot of the people who are trying to help certain people they get threats. But it is a when I tell you it's an underbelly, and that's exactly what it is. It's a very strong niche, and so um, you know my wife got me hooked to it, and so I basically uh, been watching it, and I was like, man, what could I what could I do that has a strong niche? Because what happens is as storytellers. We we try to appeal to everybody, and that and and I really kind of came along when I went to UCLA a few years ago. You know, niche is the new mainstream. Mm -hmm. See, there is stories like, and let's just say there's a story on a particular block in Avondale. You see what I'm saying? And you could tell that story so well that everybody right. across the country mm -hmm. will watch that story because it's told so well. Mm -hmm. But if I try to tell a story about all of whatever it's it's going to be watered down and people aren't going to be able to to relate to it so niche like the tighter the niche that you have when you're telling a story a lot of times it broadens the appeal and so i saw in soft white underbelly it was such a a niche that you know it appealed to a lot of different people and so I swear I wanted, I said, well, what can I find that has a niche? But, you know, obviously one thing about me is I love my people, right? And, you know, we Let's have- Let's give a round of applause for you loving your people. <laughs> 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 right? right? Don't we all? All right. All right. You know, and so uh, I, I figured, you know, I'm in the, you know, the shadows of Hollywood. I'm in Hollywood and let's talk about their journeys in Hollywood. So Black in Hollywood really is a docuseries that really first celebrates Black excellence. Uh, and then secondly, it, it, it talks about the intersectionality of being Black 
in Hollywood because there's there's an intersectionality there, right? It, it, it's not we're not always treated the same. So what does that look like? And I tell you what, the results were pretty astounding. I interviewed ten people, and you will find a range of stories, and it's just been very compelling. So. Um, I'm still in post-production on several episodes, but I finished an episode and put it out uh, in the festival circuit. It's been in two festivals and it's won two top awards. So it's that's really good. Let's give a round yeah. of applause. Round of applause to that. So that's big. That's real big. Let me ask you this. So we had some other uh, uh, movie makers. So what did you call your title? What is your title? All right, so uh, Black in Hollywood is the title, but then of the entire docu series, but each episode has a different uh, episode title. So I basically, there's a theme to everything, and I think that when people start to storytell with themes, their stories are stronger. If you ever watched the movie Ray, right, mm -hmm. the movie Ray, the theme of that movie is when his mother said don't let anybody make you a cripple do go things your own way when he was about to turn blind he was a little boy she gave him that speech and the rest of that movie was him doing things his way right. and so that was such a strong theme that it resonated it gave the flavoring and it guided the rest of the the, the movie so in stories you always got to decide like what is your story going to say you see what i'm saying and what is it saying like the, you might have some cool scenes cooked up. You might have some things that you like, oh, I know I want to put this in this. But after it all, so, uh, it's called the trials of tokenism because tokenism, wow. when I start to do some research on tokenism, you know, there is a lot of undue stress put on tokens because nobody listens to that token outside of what they're token for. Wow. So you're the only person that's going to talk about blank because that's your field. And so people have, like I said, with football players, they have such a, a wide depth of surrounding a spectrum of gifts that people just overlook them and they don't and they don't take, you know, anything into account outside of what they're known for. And so it causes stress. It causes burnout and, you know, a feeling of invisibility and I realized that that's what he was doing. That's what he was experiencing when he was on the red carpet and he's saying, hey, here's Gabrielle Union. We want to get a young Gabrielle Union. We want to interview her. They're like, uh, no, let's go to this white girl. It was like, and, and so it, it kept happening over and over again. I went to, to the, the white girl too. Where he started his own uh, blog on the side that just covered black people. And he got he got he got found out because one of his stories went viral and they gave him an opportunity to take it down. And he was like, nah. And they fired him. They walked him out the building. He was like, yo, I'm doing this for black folks. So, you know, I looked at that and I started seeing, you know, that there's this is about tokenism. And so I called it the trials of tokenism. And so uh, that one is doing incredibly well on the festival circuit. Now, wow. every festival is here. It's, it's one. And. And yeah, I, here's the thing. Like, if somebody sits down and watches something of mine, I don't care whether it's two minutes or two hours. I just want people to be entertained. And so, this is a 22 minute piece, a half hour piece that basically I think people they have really connected with. So I'm pretty excited about. How can they reach? How can they view this piece that so you're this mentioning? Is, it hasn't been released yet. So Ooh. right now, I, it hasn't been released. <laughs> the episodes. Okay. So I'll probably start doing some screenings in 23. Okay. And uh, yeah, I, I'll make sure that if you go to black, the letter in Hollywood at uh, IG, you'll be able to be updated on, you know, where it's going to be. Invites, invites, invites. Yeah, Just make sure here. we get some you gotta invites. Do a screening okay. Here. That's all I, I want to say. Um, definitely. You have some interesting work. Um, Grizz has talked about some of your pieces like way before now. Um, we had that. another uh, director here and uh, he was wanting to have you on the show then. I think it was just conflicting schedules, but definitely he's been tapped in. So I'm interested, very interested to see, um, you know, just how that creative side of you works. I know that anytime you are something as major as uh, uh an athlete, right? Not just a regular athlete, but when you go pro athlete, 
you definitely have way more talents than just one. I don't know why people discredit people that can do anything on that level. You're able to be successful at that and have that work for you because it's not a lot of black men that you see that are able to take advantage of something that not only pays bills, but it's also something that they actually like to do. When you get into the black community, you find oftentimes people are doing what they got to do, right? So you don't get to see this side of it um, often. So I'm happy that this has happened for you. And um, I'm excited. I want to see what's next. Do you have a next thing? Is there a next baby that you already kind of got, you know, oh, kneading the dough to to put in the oven? What 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 we got going on? Yeah, yeah absolutely. <laughs> One of the things that I, I do, I, I develop like several projects at a time. So and it takes me a long time to develop uh, because I want it to be, you know, some caliber of quality. And so I, I do have several small uh, minor people. level of perfectionists you might be suffering <laughs> from. <laughs> right. That's the, thing. That's the really the biggest thing is that you know, you really you you know, there is a balance there where I you know, at some point I was out here for I, my very first project I mentioned with Taja Simpson, I never came out. We ended up losing we were spread too thin as a as a as a team uh because we didn't have a budget and some things fell through the cracks and we missed some footage. We missed, we taped over some footage. Oh, and so man. when I, we try to get to the edit, it, uh, it, the pieces didn't really quite connect, man. And that really took the, you know, just, it just knocked the wind out of us. Yeah. And so, um, that how do you stay motivated? Huh? How did you stay motivated? I know sometimes you just gotta like step away regroup and retool because I was at UCLA for all of that year, which was 2016. And all I did was just write, I wrote a pilot version of that web series and I wrote two other projects, just getting away from it. Mm -hmm. And then in 2017, I tried to put the pieces back together. We did an amazing sizzle reel, but we couldn't shoot uh, some of those scenes that we lost, but that thing is still on deck. But here's the thing. I've been out here at that point for two years and nothing had been released that was mine. Then three years passed, nothing had been released. I didn't release anything until 2020. So, you know, I've had some missteps, right? And so you've got to, so I, what really hit me was that like, I'm really out here and I'm saying I'm in Hollywood and I'm not releasing anything. I'm a fraud. Like I really felt like I was like, yo, right, I'm right. taking a bump. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? And yeah, I was like, that's I an really internal thing you battle with. You know, and so I ended up um, in 2019 shooting something, put it out in 2020, and just like, yo, let people know we're here. And that won some awards in the festival. And now I'm going to write a pilot version of that. And uh, I'm going to do a long term, a long form version of the other side of normal. So, so yeah. So uh, I remember when I told you I took that uh, program at um, Universal, uh, Anthony Anderson. It told me a story about when he uh, was selected to be in a pilot. A pilot is the first episode of a show. They normally shoot pilots uh, January, February, March, all right, just to prove the concept. And then in like April so or May, they have a first what quarter called business. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And so they'll say, okay, cool. We're, we're going to take that from pilot into to series, right? So he got it selected from the pilot. But in between the pilot, uh, selection and him shooting it, he had told everybody, he had told his family, he had told his friends, he had told everybody that he was shooting his pilot and uh, turned out that the production company wanted him, but the network didn't. So he didn't get selected. And I just remember thinking like, oh my gosh, that is a different type of strength. Because in football, if I get hit, or if I hit somebody, right? And then I get hit and it's hard, like it hurts. It hurts so much, it hurts your insides. I gotta bite my, my mouthpiece. I got 30 seconds to sit back in that huddle and I gotta go out and try to hit him harder than he hit me, right? But in this industry, you know, 
to be able to say, hey, I'm going to be in this movie. And then you go and you sit and you're not in that movie. That is a different type of strength. Right. You know, and so you got to be able to deal with that type of rejection and that, that type of pain, that type of hurt. You hear about, you know, like imagine being excited about a movie and then the trailer releases and you're waiting, you're, you're looking at the trailer and then you everybody is it. making terrible <laughs> comments about it. <laughs> That's a different type of strength. You yeah, that so, takes a little a little bit of difference. So was that before <laughs> or after his appearance in Me, Myself, and Irene? Because I'm a, oh, I'm a movie buff myself now. So okay, I'm, I'm yeah. a little bit versatile when it comes to these things. So that was, I think, the very very first you thing I ever saw him in. You didn't see him in me, myself, and Irene? I can't remember him being I'm a that Jim movie, Carrey you know, fan, so he was one of the know. kids when they grew up. Shut the front door! No, I'm not lying. I gotta go back I'm not to lying. Movie now. You gotta go I back gotta go and watch back. it now. <laughs> I'm telling you, I'm gonna be real honest, is that you guys... Uh, there's not that much separation between you being a movie buff and then people in the industry other than, you know, the applied, uh, the applied focus towards a particular skill set, right? right? But you know what good story is. You yes. know what you like. You might not be able to articulate, right. you know, in industry terms, but mm -hmm. you know what a good story is. Mm -hmm. So you could take that and apply that in this industry and you'd be like, yeah. oh, okay, cool. So yeah. I take my movie buff stuff mm -hmm. and I like watch something. And if I'm watching the edit of mine, I'm like, mm, something ain't feeling right. Okay, right. this is what we need to do. Yeah. So you, you got that. <laughs> you see what I'm saying? Yeah, because Which I'm, I, I'll be. the set the perfect he, he's got a role for me he does i know he does he do. but he is we good at acting the ass got, okay well, no i'm kidding <laughs> but uh i got a question i got a question though for real on a serious on the serious set um you did this uh black and hollywood i want to know about the relationships among black actors screenwriters Ooh, the whole yeah. the whole conglomerate How because that? when we watch certain movies or it'd be this it'd be the same and no offense to the tyler perry's it'd be the same tyler perry folks and yeah. this and this and a lot this, of times we do see the or back in the repeated. day yeah and back in the day it, when it was the uh when the Sinead Lathans, uh, mm -hmm. the uh, Nia Longs. Nia Longs. Yeah. Uh, we don't them. really see them venture outside of yeah, what, it's like what, pockets. what's going on in Hollywood. So, and contrary to popular belief where they say uh, the lighter complected um, are favored, I see a lot more darker complected uh, people that are rep repeated in some of the larger movie roles. So how... Is that? That's the dynamic. a great question. Yeah, that's a dynamic. Yeah, how you, is that? He's sitting there talking, and and he's talking about his journey and some of the places, like these award, like remember the uh, the uh, film festivals. Mm -hmm. Like some people have, to, you have to know somebody to know, know somebody, somebody that know, know somebody, somebody <laughs> to get in or invited to one of these film festivals. Which it was part of his story. He knew somebody that knew, knew somebody. somebody. Yeah. But how was the dynamics among amongst us in that field? You know, I think it, it's getting stronger, especially, I think, you know, as to me, uh, there was this whole conversation and it, and it flares his head up every so often about um, British actors taking American roles. Mm -hmm. I just so, heard somebody say like, that last week. I didn't realize oh, how many <laughs> British actors there were that had American roles. Oh, really? Yeah. How do they talk like they that? They had their accent very well. Right. It's it's uh um, how do they do of, that? It's part of acting, and some of them it's take classes. It's a skill set. Yeah, and your so, your uncle does him and him and <laughs> him and uh Bear, Rodney and Bear got that stuff down pat. You yeah. can I bet you if they when they do that, you would think that <laughs> you would think that they was over British over Britain. Absolutely, Mike. Yeah, some of that stuff. <laughs> 
<laughs> I'm sorry. Yeah. Sorry. That, <laughs> that literally was a big point of contention at some point a few years ago. And really, what it to me, it's a non-factor because to me, black people anywhere are black people everywhere. Yeah. And Absolutely. if we really treated it like that, we would understand that scarcity is a man-made phenomenon. Mm-hmm. The only reason we're uh, black actors here in America might be upset that a, a, a European black actor is taking their role is because of the scraps that Hollywood feeds them. Mm-hmm. Because there's not that many roles for black people. And so uh, what is wow. out there is coveted. You understand what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. So to me, if the black, it, listen, if we got the black, if we got the Oprahs and the Tyler Perrys of Europe and Africa and Asia and South America, and we could create something that rivals Hollywood. You mm-hmm. understand what I'm saying? Absolutely. But, but since it's so scarce, you know, people hold on to it. And that's a man-made phenomena. Like there's enough out here for all of us. There's enough out here for all black people to get get a piece of. Yep. But and so that scarcity. So if we understand that we come together. If we can come together, there's a lot more that we can do. And so you'll find, you know, the Ava DuVernay's of the world, you know, has been able to really leverage her platform. People like Lena Waithe, of, um, the shy, she did the shy. Mm-hmm. She's, she is kind of considered like an abrasive personality. So p- some people might, you know, have some sort of feelings about her, you know, because of public comments that she's maybe made, but she puts on for her people. That's one thing about her. You see what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. So there are people that are like, okay, cool. Let's let's forget all this. Let's go ahead and put on and, you know, work together and we can do some good. You know what I mean? Yeah. And I think uh, I'm, I'm glad that you said that. And I think along with that, um, we just got to lose that, that mentality that there is not enough because there's more than enough. You have to yes. remember that just the United States is in trillions of dollars in debt. So there is right. money that is tangible to right. all of us. So one right. thing that you said that really kind of touched me um, and it brought up, I was watching an, an interview um, and it was a Jewish guy that is big in Hollywood and I'm not going to name any names. So listen, no, this is very interesting. Jewish community kind of have similar backgrounds, right? Because there was a point in time where the Jewish community couldn't get health care. They couldn't get jobs. There was nobody that was publicly wanting to service the Jewish community. What mm-hmm. came out of that that was intriguing and important to me was the fact that their unity behind that between being outcasted from every other major yeah, society They created this unity amongst their culture where they are vastly successful, uh, financially independent, and um, they, I won't say went through some of the same quarrels, only simply because in the fixing of their community, they didn't have a lot of assassinations and, you know, continued violence toward that part of their movement. But it was interesting to say, I mean, to hear that that common thought process really kind of united them. And then for you to say, again, that could happen in Hollywood. I think it could happen across the black community itself. Do you think do you think do you, do you, well, we could we could have so segued into this and <laughs> into all of this? Because your boy, we go back to doofus one, doofus two, oh, you know, uh, oh, uh, to bringing this attention to. But okay. this would be the time to put that narrative out instead of worrying about exposing them. Yeah. Why don't you go ahead and capitalize and on creating all, that community? Yeah. Creating yeah. the community that they commu- that they have shunned us from. Well, yeah. Or that, that he feels shunned from. I, I won't say us collaboratively because I'm not rich. I'm not in Hollywood and it, it I'm nowhere be, near on Kanye's but level. It, it, so. just, it just behooves <laughs> me that we have all this black so-called excellence 
We do. We got our, but let me tell you something. And we can't because, get wait a minute, because they don't get addressed the same way. When it's our culture, we see massacres and assassinations. And I was going to say that that is relevant currently right now because it's not just with our culture anymore. We're, we're able to see it happen because of all of these, what do you call them, uh, theories. What do you call those theories that you'd be coming up with? They're not conspiracy. It's conspiracy, it's not conspiracy theories. theories. If it's happening in your- <laughs> Uh, African, or, I'm, I'm sorry, young uh, yeah, American, sure. <laughs> European damn. American, sure uh, or uh, other damn culture. Sure. They're not African American, of course. They no. would have never made it to that. But I'm just saying, you see it happening. So mysteriously, three people that have the largest amount of money invested or earned from crypto. this crypto have been, uh, they, they've just died in ways it's like, what? What? Yeah. So you mean what? So now where all that money go? You they get to keep it. They keeping the money because mm. uh, apparently they didn't have the business end of the business set up because you need to trust. You need some lawyers. Or you need to know where your stuff is going if in case in the event of this happening. And but you can get I'm all this with say, Ivy you can the get that with me. You just yeah. gotta tap in. Outside of that, what go. I'm saying is, is if you don't know that. You don't even know that you don't know that, right? So it's so much that we don't know. So like how you said about the uh, uh, Writers Festival that happens, what does right. that look like uh, in Hollywood? Right. What What is a Writers Fest? What happens? You the only person in there, wasn't you? <laughs> <laughs> was you the token? <laughs> you was the There's token. A lot of resources, you know? He was a token. That's where he got the yeah, idea from. What does that look like then in that environment? What is that? Yeah. You'll be surprised. There's a lot of resources uh, available to people who are looking for them. And I think that every uh, location, every city has a certain industry that it's sort of built towards. For example, um, I remember we were doing the Lamert Park Film Festival, Zarian's Festival, and he had to rent chairs. Mm -hmm. Um, and so he had to spend money and get shares in this company. All they do is they take these chairs, they set them up, they drive off and then they come back. That's their business. And so it was very interesting that in this town, you know, if I wanted to just buy a couple of hundred chairs, right. And a pickup truck, I can make a viable business because they're, so many events going on right. throughout the year. And so this town is privy to a number of different industries like that, right? Whereas in Cincinnati, since it, it, we have 10 million people here, Cincinnati only has 2 million. Right. It might not be as so many different, plus of the, the weather changes in the winter, certain yeah. things of like that. So Cincinnati might not have as many, but Cincinnati has its own industry where right. people can slide into and they can make take advantage of it year round or whatnot and make a living from. So when we talk about these festivals of such, you'll be surprised y'all how many of those things occur and exist both here and now in other major metropolitan cities where people will want to write. So you'll be like, when I say we were in San Diego, it was a great trip. I met some amazing people, but we had a good, 250 people they probably paid. I don't know how much money they paid just to be there, just just to be there for that weekend. Because, you know, sometimes access gets you yeah. to some doors that you couldn't just do by skill alone. Yeah. Like they say, rubbing elbows with the right people. Something like that, huh? Very much so. <laughs> much so. You'll be surprised, you know. Uh, just the people that you meet. Thing. Yeah, Hollywood is one of those type of places. People look at me 
and they be thinking I'm somebody. I'm like, yo, you know, I ain't like like people look at me and I could tell they would think like I could be. Mm-hmm. And I'm thinking in my head, like, <laughs> but they just don't know. Right, right. They have no clue. <laughs> but you are you somebody because you, you don't know. You, you could be no holding clue. on to the next big Hollywood gym exactly. and you just ain't had your moment yet. Hold on. So shameless plug. <laughs> New segment <laughs> no. coming to Grizz yeah. is my two cents. The local nobody. The local nobody. nobody. <laughs> Traveling all around the country, finding out that you are somebody. It's real. Give a round of applause to my brother in this new uh, show coming out, The Local Nobody. Okay. I, I, I'm interested to see that as well. Um, there you go. So definitely, um, Brandon, you have dropped some gems. Um, you have given us a little bit of the inside scoop. Uh, what you haven't told us, you kind of beat around the bush a little bit. Like I got a lot of things I'm working on at one time. <laughs> you got to tell us at least one thing. Is there anything that you're working on yeah. that the people who are listening yeah. can tap into that they're like, can get to know you or your skill or a part of the business any better? Absolutely. Well, one one project, I always like to, to stretch out and do things that I haven't done. That docuseries that I've did, that was the very first docuseries that I've ever done, and it's going extremely well right now. But here's another space that I'm going into, and which is stand-up comedy. And so I want y'all to remember this name. This is Tina Graham. Tina Graham is the godmother of comedy. And she has been around for 30 years at the forefront of these, at the time, young comedians that she said, hey, give them a chance. And they've got on Deaf Comedy Jam, Comic View, uh, Bad Boys of Comedy, uh, Who's Got Jokes and all sorts of stuff. And so she's been at the forefront of that for the last 30 years. When I met her several years ago, Def Jam Jam did their 25th anniversary special on Netflix. And she was getting text messages from comedians who uh, were at the special asking her what table she sat at, she was sitting at. And she didn't even get invited. So I told her, I said, you know oh, what? That's you've done bad. This, you know, for enough people, you've done this uh, a long enough time. It's time to do it for yourself. I want to give you, I want to give you a show. I want to, I want to do shows with you. I want to partner with you and do some shows. So uh, my goal with her, I pitched her a concept and she loved the concept. And so we're kind of, we're working that concept out. But at the same time, what I want to do with her is that she's a legend in right. comedy circles. Yeah. Okay, so like she's a legend. When I tell you I went to Atlanta, she's in Jersey. She went to down to Atlanta comic, to a comics convention and the comics, the hey, way they respond your phone to her is ringing. Is Pick up your phone. Hold on. Uh-oh. Hold on. Her, Hold on. Uh, her um, and so people respond to her amazingly and she still just sits there with a pen and, and she's still sharpening her craft. And so we're working out this concept. But one thing that I want her, what I'm going to do with her is I want to start doing shows and I'm putting her name on everything. Tina Graham's live from Tina Graham's this. And I want to do several shows before we get to that bigger concept that I have. Mm -hmm. So I want you all to just remember the name Tina Graham. And I really want your support when I push this button because we're going to definitely need it. No doubt. Um, Darnell Rollins, uh, Ashley Larry, she was just in New York City. He came to her set just to give her flowers. I'm gonna make a post about that a little bit. After this, I'll make a post about that. But you know, she'll have like 60, 70 comedians. Mike Epps are on down that would just- Yes, I was just getting ready to say, it's probably a lot of big names that probably owe her some some huge thank yous down the road here uh, that we are not aware of. So I'm glad that we are here. The name is Tina Graham. Live and direct Tina from Mr. Graham. Brandon Myrie. Yes. He told hey, y'all first, let's keep give, us locked in. Let's give Tina in. Graham a round of applause. Let's give <laughs> Tina Graham a round of applause. Watch how we ride this way. Yeah, make sure we know when that move is being made so we can be um, of ultimate support. Oh, yeah. I knew I was going to get it out of you one way or the other. See, yeah. you just got to know when to ask the right questions. Let's See, I'm working on my of Oprah craft right now. Come on, okay. Call right <laughs> I'll be wondering what she be doing. Not only do I want the audience a chance to get to know, 
Not you, Grace. They know too much about you. No, I'm kidding. But I need them to get a chance to know our guests. And not only that, like, know how to support you, know what's coming up. So before we get out of here, before we get to the end of our show, how can the people tap into you? Brick 2500, Brick without the C, B-R-I-K 2500. At Instagram, uh, they can also go to uh, pro.moviefield.com. Sign up. Sign up. Pro.moviefield.com. The name of my company is Moviefield Entertainment. So moviefield.com. But if you put pro dot in front of it, you'll be able to sign up to my uh, subscribers list. And I'll, I give them the, the first of everything. I even try to give out free tickets when I get screenings and things of that nature as well. So if you go to pro.moviefield.com, you are like, you considered family. I'm just going to be real honest, man. That's my family on there. And so uh, oh, check awesome. that out and uh, Brick2500 without the C on IG. That's what's up. Thank man. you so much. Thank, thank you. For thank you. On to this show. Uh, we appreciate getting to know you, having this intimate moment with you, um, learning a little bit what we did and did not know about the film industry. Grizz always suspected it's a lot of BS going on behind the scenes. So we're going to have to get you back for a little bit of gossip. We're yeah. not going to ask you to name no we, names, but we got to know some of know, what you know, happens you know, behind the scenes in Hollywood. Know, I'm not. That whole thing works. Yeah. The less, yeah, you, the, the less. I'm gonna tell y'all this. This is the funny part about this is because give me the name. People from Cincinnati, y'all, we feel removed in Cincinnati from here. So <laughs> I get people from Cincinnati will talk about talk crap about people on a project or something, whatever. And I'm like, yo, it's you like can't that do that. Thing where the guy said, I got to live out here, like. <laughs> Yo, you don't want to say that. Here, Look, it's right? lay on the Uber stay, okay? You can't be getting him uninvited to all of the other stuff by asking him to name names and tell dates. That's what you don't do. You're I just want to know what was funny. No what was? <laughs> I want to know what. going to ask and insist that you answer any of Chris's direct personal questions, answer okay? Questions. <laughs> You're going to get an invite even if you don't, okay? That's all I want to know. Thank you again, Brandon. It was so nice to spend this candid time with you. I appreciate you being an open door for us, and just remember to stay tapped in with us. Um, uh, who's that? Uh-oh, we got a caller. I'm sorry. Before Z, we get Z. off the line, call a caller. Who you say? Now, see how you do, Z? That's King Z. <laughs> this, is a, this is a proud, this proud, this proud, proud family supporter of pro.moviefield.com. Okay. Yeah, Brandon Marie, he the, he, the, he the business over there in Hollywood. That's what's happening. I'm tapping in. Yeah. I like that support. This is, uh, for... this is Zarian. Yeah, Zarian. We, know who, we know who you are. <laughs> we, we know who King Z is. <laughs> He, you know, he had to tap in one time, like, let look, me support it, my folk. What happened to your interview, you, KZ? Yeah, ask you your know what? Well, I ain't gonna, gonna be black and ugly like that. I'm yeah, just gonna yeah, say, remember yeah. that we invited you. We got history to together. Everybody. Yeah, and, and yeah. Don't, don't let Grizz shy you away from the show. We gonna be good to we you. We got history together. We I just promise. stayed up. We just stayed up problem, all, Grizz, all night looking at the they contracts. Know, they know that you gonna bring up some embarrassing bullshit. And now they be like, you know what? Fuck all that. I ain't going. Well, I'm not gonna let him do that to you. I'm, Count let me, on let me. Let me. Let me, let me bring up. Let me bring up. Let me bring up one of theirs. Some moments, right quick. Oh, oh see, Grizz, you know, see. Hey, Grizz. Hey, Grizz. Hey, I'm gonna tell y'all something. If you got something to hide, you might as well be the one to bring. So don't no, be... Go ahead, King Z. Spit it out. No, don't. Let, let the hey. people hear what you got to say. Was, was, was Crucial, epic. huh? Yeah, it, it, it was, it was, the, 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 it was witnesses to that. Yeah, let, him, 
Tilly. Go ahead. <laughs> Go ahead. Hey, 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 nigga, he whooped my ass. I ain't going to lie. He whooped my ass. Who did he this to you? Ass. Big Blue. <laughs> okay, Craig. <laughs> but you know what? But, but check this out. We ended up making. We we ended up getting cool, and he gave me a ride home after he beat my. That nigga, that nigga beat the piss out of me. I ain't gonna lie. He... Hold on. But here's the here, here's the funny thing, though, right? This. I'm looking out the window, and I hear what's going on in there, and that's everybody conversation. And the nigga was mad at me for something. It was some business. Some... It was Shug Knight down here soaking wet records. <laughs> so after he gets through doing that, they doing their dance. He comes down the hallway to do a dance with me. Not little bitty old Grizz. <laughs> <laughs> Your ass is too damn big. man showed up no nigga, I wasn't. you ain't talking to me no 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 no, no, nigga. you know no no it's not like that the nigga came through and this must respect the blue that's my nigga in the throat <laughs> he came through the door i hit him dead in the throat she said i'm doing mine first man I, ain't get, I'm a, I just heard we went on back there and you was not gonna do that to me He grabbed his throat like what Zen said. <laughs> Zen said I should have picked up something. The nigga said you don't play fair, Chris. <laughs> Shit, I'm play fair, nigga. You damn near three hundred pounds. Yeah, he told with you, huh? Hell yeah! <laughs> I just see what you did to Z. You see what happened? <laughs> told me real quick, man. Tell him just real quick. Tell him that Cat Williams story real quick. I was oh, man, K. K. Riley, K. K. Riley, and uh, and Fresh, y'all you know Fresh. You yeah, know yeah, yeah, yeah. K. K. Riley and Fresh came. They came out to L. A. You know, saying to visit me, man, and uh, we was hanging out, man, and um, that's right, we're in the Cat Williams. I think we was in Koreatown or something, and we seen Cat Williams, and we was like, "What's up, man? We from the Natty, bro? Haven't there? What's happening? You know what I'm saying? Right, right. <laughs> And uh, and uh, he was like, "What's up, man? What's what's going on, players? You know what I'm saying?" So he was, you know, he was in his cat mode. He had this, he had this, like a, a a funny like six passenger, like a like a ten passenger stretched navigator SUV. <laughs> it wasn't like fully long, but it wasn't like right the regular one. It was like right. it had an extra two extra three people door. Fitted, you yeah, know? yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, so, so he he opened up the thing. He had like the, the little bezel, the bezel little uh, you know how the pimps got the little the little glass, right. The little, the little chalice, what, is, what they call it, you know, the little pimp mug, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. With all the diamonds on it and all that. Uh -huh. He got out, what's up, what's, what's up, player? What's up, what's up, what's going on? Uh, we're like, what's happening? What's, what's going on tonight? He's like, man, I'm finna hit the studio, you know what I'm saying? And uh, we're like, shit, we, what's, what's happening? He like, shit, I'm on my way now. You know, he, he closed the door, started driving. We started following behind him, you know what I'm saying? So we thinking like, we shit, we finna kick it, you know what I mean? You know what I'm saying? So yeah, we finna we finna do it all. Like, all right, it's on. We get down to Warner Brothers. He pull over. And he said, "Man, I know y'all niggas ain't following me." And shit. <laughs> <laughs> Warner Brothers, not we, nigga. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> it's funny because he came like, he, you know, Cat Williams, Cat Williams feel like he like six five, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> so, so he, he, he pulled the car over, he got out the car, came to our car like, hey man, I know y'all niggas ain't following me, man. <laughs> <laughs> we, said, we said, shit, what, 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 what we need? What, 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 what's happening? <laughs> he like, man, I, shit, we got Snoop in there, you know what I'm saying? If I bring three hard heads, and he gonna be like, man, what the hell going on? <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, man, you know. Oh, Avondale like, ass oh, niggas okay, trying to okay. hang with me. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> 
Like, you know, That's a good one. At least he, at least he ain't curvous, though. You know what I'm saying? He ain't right. curvous, like, you know what I mean? Right, right, right. He, he like, let y'all let, know that shit ain't going down. We cool and all from the city, but yeah, you feel me? Yeah, yeah. Don't yeah. follow me to Warner Brothers. I can't get down here. I'm about to go to work. Oh, won't y'all come with us? You know what I'm saying? Right, right. right. That is the most hilarious thing. And the fact that he stopped. It was like, I know y'all. Why y'all come? That's selective Jeez, hearing. You know, we was like, well, shit, I, did, I thought he said, let's come hang. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, shit. <laughs> then he said, I'm going, not we. <laughs> Hold on, player. Oh, that's a good one. Hold on, player. <laughs> I know y'all not thinking y'all going in here with me, player. <laughs> Let, yeah. let, if y'all ever see K. Rowdy, uh, let me, ask him about that. Let me, let me ask. You. I'm definitely gonna. Hey, I'm getting ready. ready. I'm, I'm gonna hey, make it. He's tapping into his pimp skin. I'm about to make. This part of the promo, promo that I'm doing right oh, here. Oh, man, this was good. that's hilarious. This was good. This hey, y'all. But well, we definitely got to get up out of here. Uh, appreciate y'all calling in. Uh, Jane, you. you got to call in. and uh, I mean, you got to get your interview in, man, because you got a lot of stories. You got a lot of history. Yes, that was a good one. And you're doing your thing out there. <laughs> you want to give Brandon Keep Marie us tapped in also. another uh, round Zarian. of applause? Yes, thank you, Brandon. This has been one of, by far, uh, one of the best interviews I've been done. We've been done. You know what I'm saying? So I re- really appreciate that. It seems like we get better I and like better, when better. you include me. That we part sound a little better than that part. I'm just going to fuck with you now, for the rest of the nah, show. You, you know, know how I you, do. Yeah, because you know we about to get this check. Yeah, can you, you know help me with this check? And also we want to give a, a shout out to uh, 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 Miss Nikki Baby for joining us. She had Thank to leave, you, but Miss she Nikki got to be back with us with products. And um, Oh, I cannot reviews. wait for that so segment gonna to drop. That. That's going to be so fun. That's going to be live. And then, uh, <laughs> again, uh, we coming brother, back with news you can use. You got to know that. The local, uh, the local, nobody. Not, local nobody <laughs> bringing him on with his traveling series like that. And, of course, we got the news you can use. And this goes out to Tyann Capri. I hope you everything's working out. The doors are still here. You know what I'm saying? We, we, we moving. So, But anyway. To the top we go. Like we, go. we say every, every Wednesday, Wednesday. we're going to say it this Wednesday. Don't, Don't be, be stuck stupid. on stuff. See, you didn't make it. <laughs> See what I'm saying? Thank you, Drew. Could you please help me with you this? Didn't stuff? Mess you didn't mess up my thing. Don't be stuck on stupid, stupid and, and relaxed on dumb. dumb. Oh. <laughs> Let's go! The, the station that keeps it rocking 24 7. Ladies and gentlemen, and gentlemen, gentlemen. Grizz, Biz, my two cents. Come to the hustle, you ain't seen nothing like it. I always knew this day would come, I ain't seen one psychic. That's all my niggas play at once, I ain't got no sidekicks. And all my ladies know what's up, I ain't got one sidekick.